Hey, what's up everybody? It's Luke here and the reason that this video is blurred is because I've just come out of the shower. I had this awesome idea that I really, really want to share with you guys. So I'm just in the process of getting dressed and I figured, hey, you guys probably don't want to see that. So I'm just running around my room at the moment, <laughs> grabbing my pajamas. I just wanted you guys to hear this idea fresh as soon as I sort of came up with it and was ready to share it. So I'm just going to quickly throw something on. All right, just getting my uh, scroungy pajamas on here. <laughs> you, so this is probably going to be the first and maybe only video where I'm going to present in my pajamas but I just wanted to be ready for bed and I really want to share this with you guys. It's a super cool idea and I think you guys are going to love it and I wanted you guys to be like there right in the moment when I'm first kind of nutting this idea out in my head. Alright, so I'm just going to pick up the camera now, unblur it and sort of sit you guys um, up here just by the piano so you can watch me as I show you this stuff. Hey, what's up guys? All right, there we go. Are we there? We there? Right, it's working. Sweet, so in order to explain this idea to you guys, I need to give you a little bit of history of uh, when I was learning piano. And when I first started learning piano, I found it really, really difficult to learn pieces quickly. And I kind of felt like there were two groups, like the group of elites who would learn these pieces super fast and they had amazing technique and everything that they learned, they just, it just like, they, sometimes I like to use the analogy of a pizza. It's almost like if you've got this massive pizza, they just like consume the whole thing at once, seemingly. Whereas I felt like I had to take off these like tiny little slices of pizza and it took me forever. Uh, anyway, so that's where I was at. I st wanted to start learning pizzas a lot faster. So one of the things that I came up with, I came up with a whole bunch of these ideas. One of them is an idea I call the sweet spot. So let me just grab one of my texts here and I'll show you what the sweet spot is. Um, for those of you that have already heard me explain this a million times, I'm sorry, but I just want to have a bit of background here. So I'll go through this really quickly. This is the sweet spot. So this is your brain. I like to draw brains when I'm teaching this stuff. There we go. <laughs> Beautiful picture of a brain. You can tell I'm a bit of an artist. If this is your brain while you're trying to learn a new piece of music and something is way too difficult, okay? So it's like a hard piece of music. You're trying to do like eight bars all at once. And you're trying to grab all of that and put it all into your brain at once. This is what happens. Your brain goes crazy. It's like it's just too much for it to handle and you get really overwhelmed and you start doing crappy practice, which means that when you go into performance, you're probably going to start practicing the way that you were when you were practicing it like this with like a really overwhelmed, crazy brain. Okay, so that's not good. That's when we make things too hard. But on the flip side, if something is far too easy for you, then your brain isn't challenged enough and it means that you tend to stay in the same area. So if it's way too easy and everything just runs smoothly all the time, then you don't really get to see much of an improvement, okay? So the way I like to think of it is, if you've got a line like this, hopefully you guys can still see that, yeah. All right, this is what you can do, all right? Can't do this, uh, and down here is way too easy for you. So what we don't want to do is we don't want to sit too far under the line, otherwise we're not going to progress. And we don't want to sit too far over the line Otherwise, it's too hard for us and we get really frantic when we practice. And if you're, do, if you're doing frantic practice, then you're going to do frantic performance. All right, so what we want to do is we want to nudge this line. We want to slowly nudge that line. If you can't see that, that's an arrow, right? And try and practice something that is just too hard for us. Something that we only just can't do. All right, so that's what I call, um, that's the concept that I call the sweet spot. Finding that place where it's a little bit too hard so you only just can't do it and you're sort of sitting in that area when you practice. So, after coming up with the concept of the sweet spot, I then wanted to explore ways where I could make what I could do, what I could sort of focus on and comprehend, bigger and bigger, right? Because if I spend my entire life just practicing small sections all the time, then I progress really, really slowly. I, don't, I want to be able to practice bigger sections at once, okay? So what I want to do is to be able to grok more at once. And what grok basically means is how much you can comprehend, how much you can consume at one time. And a great way to explain this is once again with a piece of pizza. So this is a piece of pizza, all right? I'm gonna draw it inside our brain here. Now what most people do is they try and eat this whole pizza all at once. 
So they see a piece of music, it could be like 10 pages long, they get really excited, this used to be me by the way, and I'd go, yes, I want to learn all of this piece, as much of it as I can, all at once, I want to consume it, I want to be able to play it, and I practice and practice and practice the piece from beginning through to end, and it was awful. It was awful because I couldn't do it, you know? Too much of this, too much of doing what is too hard. So, what I started doing, what I eventually figured out, is I need to take smaller slices of the pizza. So, I get a really small section of music, and I just work on that, and try and get that really good. Alright, and then I grab another section of music like this, and get that really good. And another section like that, and I sort of keep building up the pizza. I've got a bit of water still on me from when I <laughs> had a shower. Anyway, and try and keep building up the pizza that way. Now, I wanted to make this even better, okay? If I can only grok that much, if I can only grok one small slice of pizza like that, my ability to learn long pieces isn't that great. What I wanted to do then was to get bigger slices of pizza. I wanted to be able to grok more at once. And so in order to do this, what I would do is make sure that the bits that I was practicing were a little bit too much for me, a little bit too hard for me to learn. So if I'm usually learning about this much music, I'd be like, all right, from now on, I'm gonna try and do learn that much at once, right? If I'm trying to learn, uh, if it's a really easy piece and I can usually do about that much at once, then I'm trying to do this much, you know, and kind of pushing that so that in the future, the slices of pizza or the amount that I can consume at once gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And the word I created for this, I'm not sure if it's a real word, is grokability, okay? Grok, I think this is how you spell it. Grokability, never try and spell on camera, it usually fails miserably. <laughs> Alright, so, this is the concept of grokability. And I think it is brilliant because if you can learn to create bigger pieces, bigger chunks in your mind that you can memorize, then you can learn pieces a lot faster. And that's really exciting. So, now that you know this concept, what now? How can you implement it yourself? Well, I've got two steps that you can take to increase your grok ability. And I've already tried these things myself and I know that they work. I've proven them with a lot of my piano students. And you know what? Most people aren't doing this. Most people are trying to eat the whole pizza. So if you can just do one slice at a time, it's going to make a huge difference to your piano playing. Most people are not practicing this way. Okay, so how can we increase our grok ability? Step one, figure out how much you can currently grok. Okay? So figure out how much you can take in all at once. So right? this is something that you have to play around with and experiment with a little bit. So find a piece you're working on, get two bars and see if you can learn that in about two to three minutes. And if it's too much and you feel like you're getting overwhelmed, then draw that back a little bit. Figure out what is your current grok ability. What is the amount that you can take in all at once, okay? So stay away from this. Try not to do the whole thing all at once. Figure out what is your grok ability. Don't get too egotistic and be like, oh, I need to be able to do as much as I can all at once. No, just figure out what is your grok ability, how much can you do at once, and stick to that. Now step two, once you've figured out how much you can grok, step two is see if you can extend that a little bit. All right, so extend. So extend your grok ability. All right, and this is the idea I was talking about before where you start creating bigger and bigger and bigger slices of pizza. Now, beware, okay? We don't want to get up into this red zone. If you end up in the red zone, don't be scared to take it back a little bit, okay? I know what it's like. Sometimes you've got five bars of music you're working on and you desperately want to do those five bars and you can't do it, but you try over and over and over and over and over again. Sometimes it's best to just say, hey, let's just make it four bars. Let's just nail those four bars, right? But the idea is, let's see if we can extend our grok ability and make it a little bit bigger so that in the future, we can learn more at once. All right, guys, so this video was a little bit messy as I'm kind of nutting out the idea in my head. In the future, I'll do another one that's kind of more refined, but I just wanted to show you guys what it's like when I'm going through these concepts and uh, nutting them out. All right, so that's the concept of grok ability. See how much you can comprehend at once, so start noticing how much you can take in at once, and then start extending that. Start pushing it just a little bit every single day, and it's bound to get better and better and better. 
and you'll be able to learn pieces faster and faster. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time.